So we're going to talk about reciprocal identities of trig functions. And so let's just start real quick. What is a reciprocal? So uh, if you, like a reciprocal, so it's literally just kind of, people think of it as like flipping the fraction, right? So A over B is reciprocal is B over A. Um, so just if I did this with like a few numbers, so like two fifths, the reciprocal of two fifths is five halves. Or the re reciprocal of one over seven would be seven over one, which would simplify to seven. Or three, if I took that, so think of it as three over one, so the reciprocal of that would be one third. So just a quick reminder of what the reciprocal is. So there are six reciprocal identities for trig functions. Um, so for all angles theta for which both functions are defined, these are those six identities. So I would highly recommend that you pause the video and write these down and then really try to just take a moment to appreciate, appreciate these identities. So sine of theta and cosecant of theta. So notice how they have this relationship with one another. Cosine and secant, secant and cosine, tangent and cotangent. You see how this works? So I've set this up so that you could make that visual connection. So these are pretty important. They're gonna come up a lot in trigs. So you want to memorize these. And um, so just a couple of things I, I wanna mention. If you're trying to write the reciprocal, you should not write out something like this, cosine to the negative first or sine to the negative first, don't write the reciprocal like this. So the reason for that is that um, the, this notation here, th this, is, this seems like super petty, like when I tell you, but this actually stands for a totally different type of function. These are inverse trig functions. So when you write this, you are referring to a very specific type of function. So you do not want to write a reciprocal like this. What you can do, <laughs> and I, I don't usually see this that often, but you can write the reciprocal out like this. And so what this would mean then is one over cosine of like 180 degrees. And then I would know that that's equivalent to secant of 180 degrees. So this would be another way you could write the reciprocal. I, I think most times, I mean, probably 99% of the time, everybody's gonna just write either secant or, or cosine and you kind of just know that, okay? All right, so um, there's another way that you can also relate these identities to one another. So since we know that they have this reciprocal relationship. So think about it like this. So sine, like I said, sine and cosecant are related. So sine of theta is one over cosecant of theta. Cosecant of theta is one over sine of theta. So if I were to multiply sine times cosecant, so remember, these are reciprocals of one another. So part of being a reciprocal is when you multiply a reciprocal with itself, it equals one. So this is a pretty important thing to wrap your head around because this does come up a lot. Okay, so um, I have just a few examples here just to kind of get us used to these reciprocal identities. So I wanna walk you through like the proper way to really approach this. So I've got tangent of theta given cotangent of theta is three. So tangent of theta, I know, is equal to one over cotangent of theta. This is like the big thing that you're getting used to in this exercise. You know, I, I think it would be wrong just to go straight to the reciprocal. The point of these exercises is to get you used to this relationship. So by writing it out over and over, you kind of start committing that to memory. Okay, and so then, right, cotangent of theta is equal to three. So then this will equal just one over three. So tangent of theta equals one over three. So you wanna make this full connection when you're doing this, all right? So what about secant of theta given cosine of uh, theta equals negative five over the square root of 50? Okay, so secant of theta I know is equal to one over cosine of theta. And so one over cosine of theta, this comes out to negative five over the square root of 50. And so then, since this is now in the denominator, I can flip this, so I can rewrite this as negative square root of 50 over five, but wait, we're not done. So there's actually some simplifying you can do with this. So square root of 50 can be simplified to the square root of 25 times, oops, the square root of two, not, not five. So I can write this out like this. And so this becomes negative five times the square root of two over five, so this actually just equals the negative square root of two. So there's a little bit extra simplification in there that you can do in this case. So just watch out for that. And then maybe just one more, if you if you wanna pause the video and, and try this on your own and then hit play when you're ready. 
So um, I've got sine of theta given that cosecant of theta is equal to 1.25. So I know that sine of theta is equal to 1 over cosecant of theta. And so now I'm going to write this as 1 over 1.25. So you want to actually use a calculator to simplify this. It, it would look weird to leave like a decimal in a fraction. Okay, so that would be not proper. So, you know, just use like a calculator to figure out what the decimal of this is if you're not sure. So ultimately I have that sine of theta in this case is just going to equal 0 0.8 and so that would be it. So that's kind of just getting you used to playing around with the reciprocal identities. I think the big thing with this is forcing yourself to write this out. You want this to be second nature to you when you are in a trig class. So it's very important that you actually take the time to write that out so that you're like almost seeing it in your sleep or whatever. And uh, okay, so that's it for this video. So I'll catch you guys in the next one.